that Rishi Sunak is underperforming compared to the front runners of contests past. Why is that? Well, he's just won the second round, so you know he's got he's got over a hundred. MPs back him. It's a very wide race. I think that's a good thing. Uh, to get uh, almost a third of MPs backing you when there are six candidates uh, is, uh, is very good. And a big increase this time. And um, he's, he's winning the argument as well, especially about having uh, his economic plan, credible economic plan. And when it comes to the polling, the polling that really matters is who can beat Keir Starmer and make sure that we don't have Starmer and Sturgeon splitting our country up? The answer to that question is Rishi Zunak. Now, you took a little bit of time to decide who to back and eventually plumped for Rishi Sunak. At that stage, he was the odds-on favourite to win. Now he's second in the minds of the bookies, potentially because he's not polling that well with Tory party members. Do you regret the decision? Uh, no. I, in fact, I feel incredibly comfortable with the decision because I took a decision based on who I think will be the be best next Prime Minister. There's a long way to go when it comes to the uh, debate amongst members. I think it's highly likely Rishi will be one of the two candidates who goes forward from here, not least because he's already got almost a third of uh, Tory MPs uh, backing him. These are the people who know the candidates best. Uh, and he's got the plan. And also he's been through so much scrutiny, both of himself and of his uh, of his plan, um, and um, you know that scrutiny will come on to all of the candidates, uh, and I know that Rishi will will uh, will will shine through that. Now, Suella Braverman has dropped out of the race. She takes uh, a number of supporters with her, of course. What's Rishi Sunak's pitch to win those supporters over? Well, do you want to have the person who has the credible economic plan, who can win and save this country from Starmer and Sturgeon? If you want those two things, then you should back Rishi Sunak. You know, he's got what it takes. He's got the character, he's got the plan, and he's the one that the country thinks is better than Keir Starmer, and that's good enough for me. Now, Rishi Sunak's been running the economy for the best part of the last two and a half years. Uh, has, his plan has been what has been running this country. To some extent, do Tory MPs not want to see a change in economic policy? want to see more growth focused and lower tax in terms of how the economy is run. Well, you can't be more growth focused than Rishi Sunak. I mean, the guy is a massive supporter of all the parts of the country, parts of the economy, the sectors of the economy that are, that are uh, growing fast and have our, you know, are, are going to shape our future. Um, but you've got to have a credible plan. You can't just say things that might sound good or you think might sound good. You've got to have a plan that can actually deliver and is grounded and responsible. And that's what Rishi Sunak has got. And if you think about it, this country has had the most intense uh, economic headwinds. You know, getting through the pandemic where the furlough scheme and all the support for small business was absolutely vital. Uh, and then the inflation shock that's come from a combination of China still trying to pursue this uh, impossible zero COVID strategy and, of course, the war, uh, which has led to the sharp rise in energy prices. Those are the two big uh, impacts, negative impacts in terms of them um, pushing up inflation. We've got to grip inflation first and not do things that might make it worse. And uh, that is, that's what Rishi's plan is all about. Get growth going, get inflation down and cut taxes when we can. Aren't there taxes you could cut that would in themselves bring inflation down? VAT being an obvious example. Uh, well, you, what you can't do is pump up the economy further and pump up inflation more by loosening fiscal policy at a time of high inflation. We've got to remember the lessons from the past. Nobody, nobody in policy making circles, whether you know officialdom or in politics, has been has was there when inflation was ten percent or higher last time, thirty, forty years ago. You know, you cannot forget the lessons from the past. It was Margaret Thatcher who said sound money must come first. In fact she said sound money is the basis of sound government. You've got to get inflation under control first and of course cut taxes when you can. And if you listen to some of the people who worked with Margaret Thatcher, they're exasperated at her being prayed in aid for the idea that you can have unfunded tax cuts that can't be afforded. 
And if you think actually about Rishi, he grew up in a in a pharmacy, you know, in a chemist shop, make, you know, understanding that family budget, understanding the way you've got to make ends meet. That's what we've got to do today, and that will get us out of these economic challenges whilst focusing on the exciting industries of the future that, that Rishi is a big champion of. His classmates at Winchester College might disagree that it was the most ordinary background in the world, but I, I want to just speak on this idea of inflation, because it's 37 billion pounds of spending, not all of it funded, raising 5 billion with a windfall tax and then spending 37 billion. Does that sound fiscally responsible? Well, if you look at the books at the Treasury, uh, it, they add up and they get debt coming down. And that's what we need to do as a country. We need to get debt coming down, inflation coming down, and taxes coming down. It, you, we, we shouldn't be trying to choose between those and just go for one of the three. We've got to have a responsible, credible economic policy. And when it comes to Rishi's background, you know, born in a, in a pharmacy to a mum who's a pharmacist, a dad who's a GP. He got a scholarship to a great school. He got into a great university on merit. He was then a successful businessman. These are things that we in the Conservative Party value, we care about. That is great. And it's great that our country can produce an exceptional individual like Rishi Sunak uh, by giving them a great start that they, that he, through his hard work, has been able uh, to build on. You know, and if you think about it, look back. 50 years, two people come to this country to make a better life for themselves and their family, and their son has been Chancellor of the Exchequer. I think it is a great positive story, and I want to see more stories like that, and I admire people like that, and that's one of the reasons I admire Rishi. Now, just finally in this conversation, we've got two candidates left in this race of five who would describe themselves as being on the free market right. You've got one candidate in Tom Tugendhat who might be more of a One Nation Caucus person. You've got a candidate in Penny Mordaunt who might fit into the sort of Cameroonian liberal conservative wing. Where does Rishi Sunak fit? Uh, he's a conservative and he unites a broad church of the Conservative Party. And I think that's another one of his many advantages.